I've been doing pottery for about eight years, off and on. And it's always kind of been, you know, my, uh, my art away from art, so to speak. Uh, you know, because it's so, it's, it's got a lot of differences from theater. It's so tactile, it's so personal, and it's so uh, just like silent and, and there's a lot of solitude in it, which I really like because theater can be so social and things like that, that when I really want to unwind and just kind of create something, I know I can just go to the studio or do some hand building or something like that. And um, it's really grown into a, a medium that I really enjoy. And I've been fortunate that I have it as a thing to fall back on and keep doing in you know, these current times. Uh, it's a little hot from where I am. My clays uh, doesn't care. I got a nice bucket of cold water and we'll just like make something fun. Um, so yeah, I, you know. I, uh, I got this wheel on loan from the studio I work out of Higher Fire in downtown San Jose, just a uh, hair's breadth away from City Lights in the uh, tail end of the Sofa District. So basically my whole life, uh, my artistic life revolves around like one square block, which is nice <laughs> between that and the coffee shop. Um, and yeah, so right now I'm just kind of uh, getting my clay figured out. I'm uh, taking it slow. I just centered it on my wheel and uh, we'll see what it wants to be. I have some ideas of what I want to make, but I don't know. It's pretty chill. We can do whatever we want. So I'll just let the clay decide. Sometimes it's easier than trying to do something on my own. And uh, yeah, one of the nice thing about pottery is um, you can kind of do it at any point. You don't need a lot of uh, expensive things. I mean, you, a, wheel, a wheel can be expensive and clay itself can be expensive, but you don't need a wheel to do pottery. I enjoy wheel work, but some of the best potters I've ever met in my life are hand builders who can just, you know, get a bag of clay and go to town and, uh, and make beautiful things. So I'm just flatten it out the floor. My, uh, I don't have a second camera, unfortunately, so you guys can't really see what I'm doing, but trust, trust that it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm just compressing my floor, which is nice because you want that you want it to be really strong at the base of your piece. It's going to hold all its weight. Collaring up. This is about maybe two pounds of clay, which is nice. With two pounds of clay, you can make pretty much anything. You can make a nice bowl. You can make a nice cup. You can make a plate. I mean, it's a good starting point for an amount of clay. It's easy to push around. It's easy to ex exert my will over um and you know it's fun it's fun and uh easy i'm um you know if anyone has any specific questions about either what i'm doing or pottery in general or just personal questions feel free to yell them at me uh you know it's easy it's chill that was fun. I just did my first poll. That's kind of the, the money shot of ceramics, so to speak, is the, uh, you know, watching, watching. If, you, if you've seen a, a video or something of somebody throwing, I think that's always the fun part is when it just becomes like a mound of clay and then suddenly they're lifting it up. And that's always fun uh, to see because it's like, you, know, you can really see the piece starting to take shape starting to form. I'm very wet. I try and keep very clean while I throw. Because it's so hot, I'm kind of just letting loose a little bit. I don't mind. Obviously, I don't mind being dirty. I mean, it's basically playing in the mud. So. But. Yeah. Taking it nice. 
taking it nice and smooth. I've been really fortunate um, in my kind of artistic life that I've been able to find a place like Higher Fire and uh, really make this hobby something more than just a hobby. Like, um, it's really grown for me as a form of expression uh, in similar ways as theater. You know, you, you start with something simple, just a regular ball of clay, right? And then you, you can make something beautiful. You can make something wholly your own. It's very close to the earth. It's very personal. Um, and it's very just like some of the most satisfying things I can do. When I'm feeling down, when I'm tired, or when I want to, you know, come down after a, a very social night of theater, I know that I can just go to my wheel, grab a ball of clay, and just like forget about the world. It's nice. It's the, it's the closest thing to Zen that I, that I do. And having places like Higher Fire, uh, which is an open studio, anyone can join. They have classes, they have a membership thing, tons of some amazing teachers work there, some amazing artists work there. It's really like a haven for if you want to learn and if you, or if you just want to make. And I am. Um, I came up uh, through the community college systems of uh, visual arts uh, through San Jose City and Foothill College, both of whom, or both, both schools have uh, tremendous arts programs. Uh, I learned so much at Foothill with Andy Ruppel and that whole artistic staff. It's, uh, it really, kind of opened my eyes to a medium that you don't really, you don't really notice unless you look for it. I, you know, I didn't really, you don't really hear about ceramics in the news as big, big public art forms. So it was very endearing to, uh, to kind of look and realize that there really is this, this vast community um, in the whole Bay Area of, of ceramic artists. I mean, Pyre Fire is not the only open studio. There's studios in Sunnyvale, in Palo Alto, and uh, everyone talks, and everyone is super eager to learn and pass on, and uh, you know, talk about what they know and what they do, and it's really, it's, it's really inspiring. I mean, you don't need to, you know, spend a ton of money and go, go, you know, do a twenty-year grad program in ceramics to like know what you're doing. Yeah, everything I've picked up, I've picked up from asking people, from talking to working professionals and artists like that. Same, I mean, it's similar to theater, where you can learn a lot by just, you know, engaging in the community around you. And, um, and it's cool because, you know, you just kind of soak it up, all that knowledge, and then you go home and you, before you know it, you're a, you're a working artist. It's a lot more achievable than I think people think it is. Anyway, this is turning out um, to be a nice little vase of some sort. I was going to make it a cup, but it's a little large for a cup you want like 64 ounces of coffee. I guess that depends on how your day is going. But um, anyone have any questions, anything specific they uh, want to know about me or ceramics or anything like that? Well, Keenan, I asked some people to share their experiences with ceramics. Cool. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I know you've got your wheel on. Well, Joel says he used to make ceramic, sculpture, ceramic sculptures from grade school through high school, but lost studio access after college. Yeah, I bet that's a thing because I actually um, I can speak to that because <laughs> uh, the only reason I found higher fire was because I I ended up losing studio access at Foothill because I took every class they offered and I couldn't repeat classes, which is not, you know, it's not a, I'm not torn up about it. It was a bit of a bummer at the time, but I ended up finding higher fire. So it all it all kind of worked out. But I definitely that can be a, a, a blow. When you, when you discover an art form and you discover a community uh, either in school or something, and then suddenly you like, can't take any more classes and you're like, what am I supposed to do? Is, does this art form exist? 
outside of this microcosm of this college setting? And it turns out it does, but it's a little pricier and you know, you have to kind of find it, but once you do find it, it really opens up. And um, that's cool, I didn't know that, Joel. I hope you can make some more sculptures in, in your free time. I don't do a lot of sculpture, but boy howdy, I wish I did, because that is some next level art. Seeing some people take just a 25 pound bag of clay and carve a face into it. Oh man, it's like a, it, oh, wow, it's really, it's really something else. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I've, you know, we're working on this piece. It's just kind of becoming its own thing. Um, what you've kind of seen me do while I talk to you about all this stuff is really uh, make the full piece, <laughs> but I'm not quite done. I've done a lot of the groundwork of it. I, I've done some poles, I've thinned out the walls. I've really grown the height of it a little bit, but it's still very much like, at least for me, I could just like cut it off and be like, there, you're done. But I, uh, I wanna do a little more. So I have this nice wooden rib that, um, I have this nice wooden rib in my hand that's really kind of malleable and uh, I can do pretty much anything with it. I have a few tools. I don't really use them. Some of my favorites are like this metal rib is really nice and it bends really easily and it's got all these great, got all these great uses. Like if I wanna kind of clean this up, a little bit, I can reduce my speed and it really kind of takes off some of the, the muck on the front of the clay. It really exposes a nice smooth layer right there. So if I want to do some, some wet surface work, I have an easier layer to work with, which is cool. Um, and, and yeah. Uh, kind of deciding what I want this to be. My, I initially wanted to do a cup, but like I said, it's a little large. So I might just, I'll just do a vase. Vases are fun. Let me dig through my bag of tools. This is like my workhorse, mm -hmm. is this tiny little piece of rubber that is just, oh man. It's so good. I, I don't know where I got it. It's a Kemper tool made in Taiwan. Um, I just, I think it came in like a, a collection of tools and I just used it one day and man, oh man, it does so much for me. I use it pretty much for everything. And uh, we're gonna use it right now. So I'm gonna- Ina, did you make the mug you just drank out of? Oh yeah, yeah. This is a Keenan original. You might know him. Um, it's blue and, and red and orange. You might not be able to see it, my, uh, but yeah, you know, it's a little, a little before and after, a little side by side. <laughs> we'll get there. Whenever you're ready, I've got a couple more questions in the chat. Up to you. Oh, cool. No, yeah, shoot them. Here, I'm gonna right. for it. I got a couple of questions from Christian and Evelyn in the chat. All right. And they would like to know about your first project. How did you tackle it? How did it turn out? And where is the piece now? Oh man, my first project. Um, goodness, what a time. Uh, I made a series of cups um, and they were hand built. I was like, <laughs> I was in San Jose City College. I, uh, a lot of things in my life had kind of transpired and I was like, I need, I was like discovering theater in the Bay Area. I was kind of finding my place, both socially, physically, moving home and things like that. And I was like, I need some kind of outlet uh, that isn't like theater or like trying to find a job or being just being at home playing video games or whatever. So <laughs> I like randomly signed up for what I thought would be an easy A, which was a ceramics class at San Jose City taught by John McGlincy, who worked the heck out of us like day one we were like on the wheel we were getting everything thrown at us i was like i was terrified i had no idea what i was doing but at the end of three hours i come away with like three small cups that i was so proud of and i don't have them anymore um i don't know 
where they went. I think I gave them to people. I used one for a long time, just like as my personal, like I made this cup. Um, and they were very bad. Like I didn't retain a lot of that early information I was learning. So I would just kind of put a ball of clay on the wheel and just like figure it out as I went. And so they were all really heavy and they all had really awkward handles on them and all of these things. And I eventually kind of found my own style and found my own you know, niche within the community in terms of what I wanted, what kind of colors I was going with. I think I glazed them all just like brown, just like the, the first glaze I thought of. And I, didn't, I don't think I dipped it long enough. And so it came out kind of crumbly and not quite fully vitrified. They were very, um, they were very rough to say the least. But uh, even with all of that, it, I could tell immediately that I wanted to keep going. I, I knew that I wanted to keep learning. And um, the only way to keep learning was to take more classes. And so I like immediately registered for the next one. And I, it very quickly became like the only thing I wanted to do at San Jose City College. So I would like build my, my schedule around like, oh cool, I'll take all these other classes and I'll have this solid five hour chunk of time to do ceramics. And I would just be in there uh, doing as much as I could and like not worrying about, um, you know, what the finished piece would look like. I would, I would make something and I would immediately cut it up and I would look inside and see how, see how the wall thickness was and like really start to use a lot of what I was learning and not so much worry about like taking home pieces or making things to sell. I was just like, I jumped fully into the, 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 student, the student learning prospect. Of it. And so, you know, now I take home things and I, I sell stuff, but initially, I think it was really helpful to not immediately, immediately care about the quality of what I was working on because I knew I wanted to get better. And so I, it, it, it was less about what I was making, but how I was making it and what I was learning each time. And I still kind of do that when I'm, you know, when something's not going well, uh, when a piece just isn't cooperating or the clay, I'm having trouble or I, if I'm not, you know, feeling it myself, um, you know, you don't, I, I, I don't get, I try not to get super attached to my work. So I'll just cut it, I'll, I'll kind of cut it down the middle and I'll, uh, this is a piece from, actually from earlier today. It's just like a little side by side slice of, it's very distorted now because it's been sitting in a bucket. But it's just like a half section of a mug that I made earlier today, just in preparation for this thing. Um, and I was, you know, I, I made it and I was like, oh, that's fine, but I don't really need this. And so I, you know, I cut it up and I looked inside and I, uh, and it helped me, you know, identify, I, even, even now I still identify when my walls are too thick or my, my, my trim foot is, you know, not quite what I want it to be. And so uh, I'm definitely kind of always learning, even though, even though I'm not in class anymore the learning never really stops. Great question, man. I haven't thought about those cups in like, geez. I'm pretty sure I still have one somewhere. If I find it, I'll, uh, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll let, I'll let people know. <laughs> so uh, I've baited you guys long enough with my favorite rubber tool. Let's do some, uh, let's change the, the shape of this piece a little bit. It's nice right now, but it's kind of boring, so. I'm gonna get the tool wet. The wheel's going about medium speed or so. My cat is walking around all the power lines that I have. That's good. That's good that she's doing that. And uh, we're just gonna see how it goes. I have my hands connected. I always try and move in a, you know, one, one fluid motion, control my breathing, and just kind of let it do its thing. So, yeah, that's fun. You see how it like completely changed? It's nice. Now I have more of an idea of what I actually want this shape to be. 
And uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I just kind of bellied it out a little bit. I want to create, um, I'll pick it up. I'll, I'll put it off the wheel and I'll show you guys. Uh, yeah, I wanted to create kind of a, a nice finer line. Uh, this is becoming something I'm a little more interested in now. It's a little different than what it was, but I mean, it's very different than what it was before. But it's a little different in terms of just a more unnatural shape, which I've kind of been into recently. I've been working a lot with stuff that is a little more interesting um, and a little less curved. I do a lot of curved stuff, a lot of belly cups and teapots and things, but I've recently kind of uh, been learning to do harsher angles and things like that, which I think is very dynamic on the wheel because it's so often, you know, you're throwing something, you're throwing a cylinder and the natural, the natural force, everything just kind of wants to spread out and you end up with a very beautiful bowl. But um, being able to kind of use this energy to make finer lines and, and stronger contours is something that I'm a little more interested in right now. And so I'm gonna try it out with this piece. I'm feeling confident, I'm feeling good. My hands are covered in clay. It's really hot outside, but you know, it's gonna be all right. This is uh, what I'm using right now. It's just a little, a little strip of leather. Uh, that was cut from, I mean, it's like a, it's like a tool. I bought it at a ceramic shop, but it's um, just a thin piece of leather that I use to um, smooth out the rims of pieces. It holds water very nicely, and it's a nice soft surface that's a little easier than using my hands. So I can kind of use it to create really smooth rim surfaces. Because like if you're drinking from something, you don't really want it to, uh, you know, cut your leg or something like that. And so this kind of using this piece, this uh, tool guarantees that it's not, which is like exactly. Keenan. Yeah. Beverly says in the chat, it's fascinating to see how the shape changed with what looked like a seamless effort. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really something, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't really talk about it, but yeah, it completely changed. It changed height. It changed, I mean, everything except volume. It's still the same amount of clay, but it really is. All I did was just uh, take um, just a simple motion. I put this little tool uh, on against the inner wall and you just kind of move out and you, you end up altering the walls in a, what I think is a really nice way. And, um, you know, it looks easy, but it, it's taken me a bit to kind of get that confidence of like, I'm sticking something that isn't my hand inside this and I, I can kind of guess how it's gonna turn out. There's a lot of trial and error in things like this. So I'm just gonna keep going. Keenan, Natalie wants to know what's the longest you've ever worked on a single piece? Oh boy, uh, maybe this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little distracted. Because like, <laughs> you have an audience. I want, yeah, I have an audience and I, I I want you guys to be entertained. Uh, <laughs> typically, if I'm just like in my own zone and I, I know what I wanna make and I'm like gonna just sit down and do it, I can throw something in like 20 minutes. Um, but like, I don't think that'd be very entertaining for you guys. Just like watch me sit in silence and like make, make work. I mean, it's entertaining for me, but it, you know. So uh, sometimes, I mean, there've been a couple pieces that I, yeah, I mean, to define like longest time, um, there are some pieces that I, like some, el some design elements, for example, that I wasn't quite confident in doing. And so I would make it and I'd be like, this is uh, not great. So I'll re I'd like stop right there and I'd just remake it. And so I'd end up spending basically a full day making like a single bowl purely because I, I want to get that design element down. I want to get that, that new idea figured out. And so you're kind of working through it. So on paper, it's like, oh, you spent eight hours and you made one bowl. 
when really it's like I made a, a, a pretty decent amount of bowls, but I didn't like any of them. And so I kept working on it. <laughs> so it's a lot of that. It's a lot of trial and error. Um, and uh, when, you know, when before COVID-19, coronavirus, I, I was going into the studio. I didn't have a wheel at home. I was doing all my work at the studio because I love studio culture. I love being surrounded by artists also working on their own projects. It's the ideal way to learn. And, um, and yes, I mean, I could throw away a full day in that kind of atmosphere, just working, and building things and talking to people, and seeing what they're doing. But um, when I'm just on my own, it depends on what I'm making. Uh, but yeah, in terms of just like a single time, single piece on the wheel, this one's, this one's pretty long. Good question. That's fun. Now, um, at this point, I'm really just doing a lot of minute detail. I like the form. I'm satisfied with the energy it has. There's, it's got a nice sharp line in the center of it. It's got some good curves. The, uh, the rim is doing this kind of fun triangle. Uh, it's a little, the opening's a little crooked, so I think I'm gonna play with that. I think I, I have some ideas of what I want to do. But I'm going to put down my favorite rubber tool and I'm going to go to my favorite metal tool. It's basically the same thing. It's just metal, but it's a little more malleable. It's a little, uh, and I'm just going to highlight, I'm just going to highlight this curvature a little bit. My hands are wet. I put a bunch of ice in this bucket of water. So it's really, it's really nice right now. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Would you like more questions or should we not interrupt you? Oh, dude, feel free to interrupt me. I'll take as many questions as you got. I got a bunch of them and I got some nice comments too. There's a nice comment here from Betty in the chat. She says, you keep the piece centered so easily. My limited experience, I had a lot of trouble keeping the clay centered. Mm -hmm. My foot is um, on the pedal at all times. Uh, you know, it, it's, that's definitely a thing I've learned over time is it's easy to just kind of, people equate it to driving when it's really not. It's like a, the, only, the only similarity is that you're using a pedal on your foot to create speed. But um, it's definitely a balance that I've like figured out over time in terms of how, like I've dramatically slowed down now from what, from what I was 10, 15 minutes ago. Um, and a lot of that is just, you just learn. You, like, I'm doing a lot more finer details now so the wheel doesn't have to be going as fast because the faster it goes the more likely I am to make a small move and suddenly something goes something goes wrong but if it's moving slow and I'm moving slow it's easier to predict it's easier to make adjustments um but like that's definitely a thing I you learn over time I had a lot of issues with that when I was first starting out I would throw really quickly. I would just, I wouldn't reduce speed. And, uh, and stuff would spin out. Like, I mean, you're, you're using a lot of centrifugal force on a, on a motorized wheel. And that force doesn't really want to stay straight. It kind of wants to spread. And so if you're trying to you know, throw a solid straight cylinder, you're going to be fighting a lot of force to keep it like that if you're going super fast. But if you slow down and really just relax into the clay, I only touch it when I want to exert change upon it if that makes sense if i if i if i don't have a reason to touch it i don't because it's it's easier for me to mess it up than it is to just mess up on its own if i'm not touching it so uh yeah that's fun any more questions or anything like that oh yeah there's a bunch of them oh dude keep them coming all yeah. right dan would like to know what are your favorite kinds of ceramic pieces to make oh Oh, oh, I love it. I was debating um, making some, but I, I opted for something else because like I said, it's, it's hot. Right now, I, it comes and goes. I, um, I have a lot of potters that I admire within the community and I've been fortunate enough to learn a lot of different styles and try out styles. Um, right now, I'm really into uh, a, a style of pottery called Kirinuki, which is uh, the complete opposite of what I'm doing right now, funny enough. It's a form of hand building where you uh, take a single ball of clay 
I'm not going to do it right now. I'll just show you. You take like a single, just, you know, chunk of clay and you just, with a nice old painter's knife, you just kind of cut away at it slowly until you have a hollowed out cup. And that's, that was a, a, a form of pottery that I, um, that I picked up at the start of the quarantine because I didn't have a wheel at home, but I was like, I like, needed to do something. I mean, theater had been canceled. I, like so many of my fellow artists were suddenly out of work. And, uh, and I was like, I need, what do I need right now? I need my, I need the most relaxing thing I can think of, which is pottery. And so I, I went to the studio on a day they let me and I picked up my bag of clay. And I just kind of got into, I got myself into hand building as a means of just something I could do in a medium that I loved that was, you know, I was learning it as I went. Um, but that's kind of been my current obsession. On days when I'm not really feeling like, you know, getting super dirty and being out here and throwing a bunch of stuff, I'll sit inside or, you know, I'll sit still right here and I'll just like slowly carve up the bugs are coming out and they're attracted to my I'll <laughs> slowly carve some Kiranuki. And, um, and that's like, oh boy, it's so satisfying to see a piece like that come together. It really is like one of the most natural forms of ceramics I think I've ever done in terms of just taking a raw ball of clay and over the course of several hours or days, depending on how slow I work, um, like creating a piece I'm really, I'm really proud of. If we had like a full day of this demo, I would do one for you guys, but sorry, after there's a bug on my, on my pie, because of course there is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, my, my pottery whims kind of come and go, depending on what I'm currently into. I've been using a lot of, uh, a lot of really earth tone glazes right now. That's kind of been my, that's always kind of been a constant for me. I always opt for more natural earthy colors in my pottery as opposed to bright, vibrant blues and, and greens and, and like really bright hues of pastels and stuff. I tend to opt for darker, more from the earth type colors, things like that. Mm. The clay I'm currently using is called Black Mountain and it, it fires almost like pitch black. And so it doesn't take some, some glazes it just doesn't look good on because it's such a dark body of clay. And so I, I use it when I want to experiment with lighter colors because I, I like the contrast of a dark, a really dark stoneware um, with a, a really vibrant glaze above it, like on top of it. I feel like it, it creates some nice, some nice juxtaposition. So this bug's not going anywhere, but that's fine. Um, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with this piece a little. Oh, Keenan, so have... before we jump on, could you repeat that and spell the kind of clay work uh, that you were just mentioning? Oh, oh, Kiranuki. 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 Uh, uh, Jeez, that was it's tough. Uh, yeah, it's a Japanese style of, um, of ceramics. Uh, and it's, oh man, uh, if you have an Instagram or something, just take a deep dive down the Kiranuki hashtag because it is some of the most beautiful work I've ever seen. I, oh boy, howdy. I could talk about it the rest of the night, but I won't because I'd rather talk about this current piece in front of me. <laughs> so I have uh, this wooden rib, which I've told you guys about a couple of times. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play around with the rim of this pup piece. I have, it's, it's kind of, it kind of, it's telling me that it wants to be a little, a little bit of a triangle. So I'm gonna do something fun. I've been letting this piece spin on its own for a little bit. I haven't been applying a lot of water because I kind of want it to soak up some of that nice heat that we're experiencing right now uh, and kind of dry itself out before I do any severe alterations, which is what I'm about to do. Um, so let's get this a little wet. Uh, my foot is off the pedal. I'll, uh, I'll hold this up to you guys once I'm done and we can really talk more about it. But for now, I'm gonna just play around with it. See what I do.
You ready for more questions? Yeah, hit me. I know I I'm very but I'm... Well, I can't, you know, I'm away. Um, <laughs> I have a very nice question from Barbara here, which is, it reflects, I think, a lot of the creative people who are, who are on this call event right now. Barbara says, I used to do visual arts, including some ceramics as a kid, but I lost time and capacity for that once I went into the performing arts, which took up all my time and energy. I'm fascinated that you were able to balance the two. Do you have advice on how to make time for this kind of art in addition to performing? Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Um, it's been tough. Uh, <laughs> the balance has kind of uh, done its own thing. It's kind of sorted itself out. Um, with a lot to do with the fact that I just can't do theater right now. And so I've thrown myself headlong into ceramics. But, um, but typically in more normal times, um, I, it just, I think because of the isolating nature of ceramics, it became really easy for me to, to give myself that time. I am, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty extroverted, but I do value my personal time really heavily. It's like a thing I constantly work toward or it's like when when can I take a break when can I be alone when can I just sit and like be my be you know in my own space for a bit um and ceramics is like perfect for that because I'll just I'll go to the studio I'll throw on some music and you know five hours will go by and um and with theater which is typically kind of an evening thing uh it was not I mean it's nice if I have time during the day or uh like a Saturday afternoon before a Saturday night show. If I'm like really anxious about the show or something, I know I can go to the studio and just like get my hands in that clay for a bit. And uh, it really helps me calm down and it helps me recenter and like, you know, relax, which is good. It's because they're, I think because the two mediums are so diametrically opposed to each other in some ways where you have, you know, the very social, a very, very, physical aspect of theater and then the ceramics for me it's very personal and um and contemplative and it's just so different that it's easy for me to, to draw that hard line and be like i'm gonna i have rehearsal at 7 p.m tonight but from you know two to four i'm doing ceramics or from 11 to four i'm doing ceramics and it's just creating that nice separation i mean on maybe even yeah it's so it's a lot of it has been like i also have the uh, added benefit of uh, working at a studio that is literally a, a block away from City Lights. So, so I could realistically like go straight from the studio to a rehearsal, which I've done a couple times, um, which I don't advise because I'm typically very dirty. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but it's nice having them in proximity. I don't have to like worry about traffic or something like that. Uh, but, um, but it's definitely like, it wasn't something I figured out right away. Uh, uh, once, when I really decided that I wanted to pursue ceramics as more of just a hobby, that's when I started making the, the decision to budget my time around ceramics as opposed to just whenever I have the time for it, which is a distinct difference for me. Because, um, you know, you, when you want to do something, you end up making the time for it. Similarly, the theater ceramics became the same for me. So, uh, good question. That was really nice to, to talk about. Um, this is not going to fall. So, with, uh, I kind of extenuated the triangle a little bit. And so, uh, this piece has become a little weird, but I don't not like it. Uh, it's got a, a lot of what I've currently been working on, which is nice hard line, nice hard edges that flow into really relaxed slopes. Um, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of it. These, I'll kind of uh, put some more finishing touches on it when it's a little drier. Because if I touch it now, it'll, it's still very spongy, still full of tons of water. And I don't want to, um, uh, the bugs love it. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> ruin the work I put into it. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it'll stick to the bat. It's not going anywhere. Although I will for the sake of look, just, my cat is laying on the towel I dry my hands on. So that's fun. Um oh, oh, is. Uh, this is fun. I don't think anyone's ever seen me do this before. But uh <laughs> 
I'm gonna, um, so yeah, I'm throwing on it just a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm gonna take it off the bat. This is the bat. This is what I throw on. It makes, it, it's easier than using the direct wheel head because it's wooden and it, I don't know. Some people like using bats, some people don't. I'm a bat person. It's every studio I've ever worked in has them, and so I use them. So that's what that is. Uh, this is just a simple wire tool. You probably can't see that, but it's just a metal wire attached to some wood. And I'm just gonna use this to get the piece off of this bat, because it's very stuck, which is a good thing, because you want your clay to be stuck to the wheel while you're doing it. And then this is just a, a piece of cardboard. We've all seen cardboard. And my hands are dry. The piece is a little dry. Even if it's not, I can just pick it up, admire it for a moment, and put it down. And all for how hot it's been. Oh yeah, this is it. This is my our first piece of the demo. That's fun. Don't worry, don't go anywhere. I have tons of clay, so hoo -hoo, we can keep going. Um, uh, this is fun. Uh, a little different than what I was planning to make, but that's the joy of ceramics. Is you can do pretty much anything um, at any time. So, quick question for you, Keenan. Yeah, what's up? Joel wants to know if you've ever used a kick wheel instead of electric. Oh yeah, the first wheels I threw on at San Jose City were kick wheels. They had electric wheels, but I was so gosh darn intimidated by by them that I opted for the kick wheel, which. Uh, you know, I haven't used since my time at San Jose City, but I think about it often um, because I've made, I made some of my worst work on a kick wheel and some of my best. And so I've kind of been wanting to, with, you know, with more experience that I have now, I've been wanting to kind of go back, but they're so cumbersome. They're so heavy. They don't, they're not really uh, like good for a studio space. They take up tons of space. They're a pain in the ass to clean. Um, but I, I admire them a lot. The one I used was this huge metal piece. Uh, and it was, a, it was a full body workout to keep that wheel spinning at like full speed when you're centering. I mean, you're getting a, a leg workout for sure. Um, but uh, I've talked, you know, I've talked to the, uh, the management at Higher Fire about getting them and they're, they're, they don't want it because they take up tons of space and they're not really, yeah, they're not really ideal for big studio culture, but like, they're fun. I like them. I would go back to one. Uh, that being said, I don't know if I'd actually, my style has changed so much since then. I'm kind of used to the electric wheel, so it might be a bit of a shock, but it would be, it would be fun. They're pretty much, I mean, you can do all of the same work um, on an on an electric wheel as, as on a kick wheel. There's really no, I mean, you, there's really no difference other than just easeability. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sweating as much on an electric wheel as I am on a kick wheel. I'm not working as hard for my art, I guess. But uh, but it's definitely easier. So I've got a couple more balls of clay prep. They're a little smaller, so we'll see. We'll see what comes up. But I just what you just saw me do was um. I just cleaned off the bat. I applied a little more water. Uh, and I'm just going to get this piece uh, on here and center. Really throw them on there, get that nice stick. Um, and so what I'm about to do now is uh, probably the hardest part of ceramics. I think it's the part with the, it's the part with the, the the hardest learning curve, I'd say, and not really, that's, that's not really the right phrasing, but um, it's definitely like, it takes, it took me the longest to get a, to get a grip on, was centering my clay. Um, because you don't want to throw an uncentered piece of clay. Everything goes wrong when it's not centered. And I don't want anything to go wrong because you guys are watching me. And I care about what you think. So we're gonna center this clay and it's gonna be good. So my hands are very wet. The clay is nice and stuck to the bat. Uh, and we're just gonna, I'm going to exert my 
all of my upper body strength, basically my shoulders to my waist, um, on this like pound and a half play. So it should go well. I've been doing this a while, so we'll see. But um, wheels going full speed, and you just lean into it. You just, you just, you don't, you know, you're not, you don't want to be intimidated. A pound and a half of clay is not going to push me around. I hope not, not anymore. Apply some water. This is the, this is when my wheel is going the fastest because you want that nice, good centrifugal energy to just all push it in one direction and get it all balanced out. And so really I got to take my, take my stance. Sometime when I was starting out, I would use my, I was a little more anxious about this aspect. So I would like use my thigh and I had, I was like, I'd like have this stance where I would like be pushing my, my whole thigh against it. Cause I was so like scared of hurting myself for some reason, but it, wet. My cat is getting wet, but I guess she doesn't care. And there we go. Easy as something easy to do. Uh -huh. So I've got, now that I've got it centered, um, my next step is I'm gonna open it up. And uh, we'll do this one a little quicker than the last one. So there's a lot of different schools of thought on uh, how best to open your clay. And a lot of them revolve around how much clay you're using. If I was throwing a big old son of a gun piece of pottery, um, I would be using like a two hand method to really like lean all into it and use more of my weight but this is a tiny little ball of clay. And so I'm just gonna use my little index finger. Um, and it should go well. I've reduced my wheel speed by about half. And this is kind of the speed I'm gonna stay at for most of this. And you just kinda, you just kinda drill into it. And then you stop. And then you get your hand wet again. And you just, and you just go back. This is, um, this looks really easy and it, it kind of is when you get used to it, but this is the step where a lot of things start to go wrong. If you have bad form for opening your pot, your, your clay, uh, you're gonna have a bad time in general. And so it's kind of, this is the step where you can really tell uh, if this is gonna work out or not. And this one looks, looks good. And the reason why stuff so often goes wrong is if you open, if you don't open fully center, you're not gonna be evenly distributing uh, a lot of the clay around when you're, when you're doing your pulls, when you're building the walls of your piece. And when you have uneven clay distribution, when the particles aren't nice and even all the way around, you, you end up, you can end up severely damaging the structure of the clay and end up weakening it. And it can all come tumbling down. And it's really sad and I don't wanna cry and so you guys don't want to see that. So we're not going to do that. So I got it open. Now I'm just going to pull it towards me a little bit. I'm creating the floor of what is going to be my next piece of pottery. Water management. Uh, is key here. You don't want to drench the clay because uh, it really it's really, can really start to become very grainy and start to fall apart on you. And that's always awkward. But that's the thing you kind of pick up. When I was starting out, I, I was putting so much water in clay and it, and it just gets so tired after a certain amount of time. Get, the particles get really worn out and you can feel it really turning to sand in your hands and it ends up really damaging the integrity of uh, the piece you're working on. But it, so learning to use less water is um, definitely beneficial in the long run of doing so. So all I did there was kind of close in the hole a little bit. Uh, you can already kind of see 
I've um, got the walls figured out. This is like a first day of class piece. I would cut this off and call it done. When it hasn't really done anything to it, it's still super heavy, but you know, it's good to be proud of. It's good to know where you started. These are what those first cups looked like, Christian Evelyn, was this. So, any more questions? Uh, Gloria would like to know if you've ever made figures with clay. Uh, figures? Mm -hmm. Um, not really. I'm not, please work. I'm not uh, the uh, most confident hand builder, other than like the Kiran Yuki obsession that I've recently started. I, um, I kind of, when I started in ceramics, the option to move right to the wheel was there. And so I took it. And so I never really did a lot of, of like pinch pots and things like that. But, um, but you know, there's, a, there's a, a, an instructor at Higher Fire who's doing um, some sculpture classes. Uh, he was doing them before the quarantine. He's kind of recently started them up in smaller settings. And I've been thinking about wanting to sign, I want to kind of sign up for one because I really admire sculpture work. Um, it's not definitely not my wheelhouse. So it would be basically just a new skill, a new type of ceramics. I'd, I'd be starting from, I'd have a little more confidence, but I'd be starting from basically zero. Um, but it's definitely, but that's definitely something I admire. I know a lot of great potters who do, who do sculpture work and it's always, Oh man, it's always really a marvel to see. Um, and so with that, I'm gonna start my first pull. I've got nice vertical walls. I've got a nice floor. My clay is nice and even. My, my hands are wet. Everything's good. My foot's off the wheel and that, my foot is off the pedal. I'm that confident this is gonna work out. Just a tiny little pull. Just a tiny little pull. That was fun. I'm not moving the clay around too much. I'm not going too fast. I'm just working it out. This is the part. This is the part I fell in love with when I started ceramics. Was like this right here because I'm not. You know, you know what you're doing. You, you have all the steps, and you just you just sit down and do it. You can really just turn your brain off, turn your thoughts off, shut down from the day you've had. Just relax. Just kind of let your body take over. Let the clay tell you what it wants to be. Uh, and this clay uh, wants to be more than this. So we're gonna we're gonna keep working. I've done a first pull. I'm just gonna keep futzing, you know. Keep uh, keep making sure my walls are straight. Compressing the rim a little bit. Uh, Keenan, Paul yeah. wants to know with this clay, what thickness, what wall thickness are you aiming for? Um, with this piece, this is a small amount of clay, so I can get the walls pretty thin. Uh, typically, thin is better. Uh, lighter, especially when you're making usable pieces like mugs and cups and bowls and things like that. Uh, the thinner tends to be the more desirable because uh, you don't want your, your mug to be really heavy before you put liquid in it or else you're just never gonna use it. You don't wanna be carrying around this weight of, of liquid. And uh, so typically I, I try and get as thin as I can, but um, a lot of it is in the, in the, in the, the, the moment, you, you decide. Like if I pull a little too quick and I end up thinning out the walls a little too much, sometimes I just call it right then and there. With this first piece, I, I made the decision to alter the form uh, like I did because I knew that I had some I had some some leeway with the thickness of the walls. I knew they were pretty thick and so I knew I could get away with kind of pushing them out but if they were any thinner my uh, the act of pushing them outward would probably have torn them and I would have lost the whole thing and so a lot of my wall thickness uh, goes into what I want to make and what I'm deciding in the moment this is just going to be a cup. I'll probably put a handle on it once I trim it. And so I'll make the walls probably like a quarter of an inch all the way around. That's kind of my, my personal ideal for a thin wall. Um, have you ever had a piece explode in the kiln? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have. And it's not, 
fun because it ruins everyone's work in the kiln. Uh, at San Jose City, I was fairly new. I didn't know how to kind of prep my clay before throwing it. There's a technique called wedging, which is removing, uh, removing all of the air bubbles out of clay because you want it to be a nice homogeneous density when you throw it so you can really move all the particles around. I didn't uh, wedge my clay. I just pulled a chunk off my, my bag, put it on the wheel, and made a pretty, pretty lame cup. And I was like, yep, this is good. And then um, in the bisque fire, it ended up, uh, when, and so, okay, back it up. There are two firing processes that my work goes through. There's the bisque fire and then the high fire. The bisque is the first, uh, there'll be a test on this, so pay attention. The bisque is the first firing, and that's just, uh, it's pretty low temperature, but all it does is leach all that moisture out of the clay body, so it's nice and porous, so you can fill it with glaze, and then, fi and then high fire it at a, a way higher temperature, and that's when you get your finished piece. So most pieces of pottery, if they're gonna explode in the kiln, they typically explode in the bisque fire, I think. That's at least my experience. Um, and I think what happened with mine was, uh, uh, because of the air bubbles, the moisture didn't leach out um, and it ended up cracking. And when it cracked, it kind of expanded and uh, fell apart. And it ended up ruining a handful of pieces around it because it's all very delicately balanced in the kiln because especially in, 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 in classroom settings, you want to get as many pieces of work in there as you can. And so it was really upsetting. I was really uh, bummed. I, I ended up um, uh, like, you know, personally apologizing to people, but it, it happens. You lose work. You, you, you got to get over it. I uh, didn't know what I was doing, but it was definitely a good lesson to like learn how to wedge my clay, which now I do religiously. Even if I know I don't need to, even if it's like a brand, like a fresh bag straight out of the, the thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's one of those tough lessons that you don't really want to have to learn, but you're glad you did. So I haven't lost a piece like that since then, um, but it definitely happens. And it's not really anyone's fault when it does, because it, stuff, can, stuff can go wrong in the kiln. Typically, you know, professionals are working in it. And so it's not really an issue. But when it happens, it's just a general bummer. But uh, you, you, it happens and you move on. It's like going up in a, it's like going up in a monologue on stage. It happens. You, you move past the moment and you just, uh, you just keep going. You just keep working at it. Any other questions or I mean, I can keep talking about what I'm doing. Well, we've got one more. Um, we've been going for about an hour and, and oh. it's been a little late. So I'm going to let you kind of finish up your thing, but I'm going to show you one more question. Okay. Sure thing. Yes. Hi, Raku. I'm, I may be mispronouncing it. R-A-K-U, Raku. Oh yeah. Raku. Yeah. Yeah. Is that just asking about what it is or if I've done it yeah, or. If you've ever tried it. Oh yeah. Oh, it's great. Um, that's one of those things you, you, you do, you do a lot of raku in school because it's, um, it's a little easier. It's fun because you get your, you get your piece immediately. So basically what raku is, is, um, it's, uh, it's a, a form of firing your piece, uh, at a, at a pretty high temperature, but, um, but you end up finishing it in like a barrel of combustibles. So like a newspaper um, is often used. At, at Foothill, we would use pine needles because they were everywhere and they burn really easily. So basically, you're, uh, you're creating carbon trappings in your piece. So you get it bisque. You, um, you know, when, when you bisque it, there are some raku glazes you can use. Uh, and I'll talk about what I just did in a moment. But I, it's, and I made a nice bracelet, what I did. 
Uh, so <laughs> with Raccoon, you, um, it, 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 it's just a, it's kind of a fun way to, for a, a different style of, uh, firing a piece. It's the, the things that come out of Raku aren't usually food safe because it's, a, it's not usually fired with a, a vitrifi vitrifying glaze on it. Um, uh, it's they're typically more aesthetic, a lot of vases, a lot of decorative pieces of that are, are look really nice Raku. But it's a way of trapping carbon on the surface of your piece. And so you, you heat a kiln to, I'm not gonna say the temperature because I don't know it off the top of my head and I don't wanna spread false information, but you heat your um, Raku kiln, it has to be a specific type of kiln, and you let the pieces get basically like red hot in it where they're glowing red. And then from there, you take them out with some tongs and you stick them in your trash can full of newspaper and pine needles and you cover it up and you just let all that smoke fill that trash can uh, and, it, and it seals all the car, all the carbon gets trapped to the surface of the piece. And you, and you can end up with some really natural, really cool organic designs across the, uh, across the, the surface of the piece. There's one, uh, there are some raccoon glazes, like, a, like lusters and things that end up looking really oily. And um, like, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the fluorescence of oil, like on a, on a surface, you get that kind of rainbow effect you can get that on some raku pieces it's really it's really pretty and it's um it's often used for things like sculpture and decorative because again the pieces aren't food safe you don't want to put anything you're going to eat in a piece that's been sitting in a trash can full of newspaper and smoke it's just not gonna not gonna work um what i did while talking about that was um my rim was uh, a little crooked because I my final pull was a little a little too fast and so uh, I wanted to kind of even it out so I just used this needle tool to uh, just kind of slice it up and and balance it out and this that's kind of a technique that I've gotten a lot better at as I've been, been doing more ceramics um, and it's generally just a nice way to even out the rim of a pot. So what I'm going to do is a little sharp is uh, I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit. Um, and I'll just keep going. Um, you said it's been an hour already. Uh, I, I'll, I mean, I'll finish this piece. I'll keep working, but um, I guess it is getting kind of late. So I'll work a little quicker. Well, you know, time flies, all that. Yeah, time flies. I've been talking about how, how easy it is to lose an hour doing ceramics and look, at, look where we are. It's okay. I was just thinking before we wrap it up, I'd invite everyone, if you want to unmute yourself, it, um, I'm asking all the questions. If anybody wants to unmute and ask Keenan something directly or just thank him or congratulate him or tell him he's cool, please do. Go on. Hey, I want to thank you for this very informative, interesting evening. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you could stop by. I'm glad that it, that it went well. I look forward to my Friday nights. I've been doing this for, what, three or four weeks or so? Yeah, they're really great, right? I've, I've been watching as many of the next stages as I can. Um, and it's great that they archive them, them, too. So if you can't catch them live, you can still see them. But it's yeah. uh, we have them all on our YouTube, and Beverly has been a regular. It's been great to see you again. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. much. Um, if you want to see more of my work, um, and less and hear less of me, uh, you can check out my Instagram, where all my pottery is posted at KMF Pots. I guess I can like drop that in the chat. If people want to see that. Uh, Please drop it in the chat. Yeah, that's my professional uh, Instagram. That's where I post the, uh, projects I'm currently working on, finished work. Um, uh, it's where I, 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 I do this as a business. Uh, this is one of my chief means of making money uh, is ceramics right now. And, um, and so that, that's kind of my, my business side of ceramics is working on my Instagram and developing my presence and mm -hmm. things like that. So if you want to check me out mm -hmm. there, you can, uh, yeah. This cup is... I'm gonna be quite honest with you, not my favorite. 
It's a little rushed. It doesn't have a lot of personality. So uh, I'm glad we got a cool piece out with that first one. But this one's been more of a, I'm so interested in like answering your guys' questions. And I've I never really you. had a platform to like, talk about spamming people. And so I feel like I'm neglecting this wonderful pot in front of me for the sake of- I wanted to, to thank all of you for asking such great questions. I learned a lot. I don't know a lot about ceramics myself. And but this is just really fascinating. It's a fun one. I recommend- um, I uh, have one last question. Oh yeah, hit me Beverly. Did you, did you have an artistic talent when you were growing up? Uh, you know, I've always kind of been drawn to it, to art, to the arts. My, my parents are both uh, science and math people. So I think that, you know, there's a, a, a wanting to be different a little bit, but, um, but it's always been, I've always known my whole life that I want to make art in any, in any capacity, whether it's on stage or ceramics. And I've been lucky uh, that I have been able to find these communities and, and really create a niche for myself. Um, it's really inspiring, and I, uh, I just, uh, yeah, I've always kind of known that I wanted to do art in some way. Uh, so you have to have the talent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it feeds my soul, and it's like uh, keeps me going, keeps me sane. It's, it's, ne you know, art is necessary. Don't let anybody ever tell you that art isn't necessary, because it absolutely is. And I, so I'm gonna say about that. So I don't get on my soapbox, but, um, but yeah, I love it. I, I would not be the person I am today without the capacity to make art in, in all its forms. Ian, and I want to let you know over on Facebook, you've got some nice comments over there. Uh, Connie saying thank you so much. And uh, Mackenzie Blair says, Alyssa and I wanted to tune in earlier, but the power outages threw us for a loop. Lisa I've heard, I've heard that there have been some power yeah. outages. He also said she was sorry she couldn't come. But uh, Mackenzie said, hope it went well. It's been great to see your face. So uh, yeah, I think we, we lost some people tonight due to power outages, depending on- Yeah, what I got some texts before the event started that there were some power outages. And I guess it's the heat doing that sort of thing. I don't, I don't know about that, but that stinks. Um, luckily, these are archived, so folks can keep, uh, can keep watching it. But that's really sweet that, they, that I, people are interested and stuff. Thanks, everyone. Jeez, my heart is so full. Um, I don't usually share this part of my uh, arts with folks because theater is typically, you know, it's my first love. It stole my heart long ago. Um, but, you know, you don't want to call the, the current times a blessing because they certainly aren't. But having the free time I've had the last couple months has really given me a lot uh, to, of time to work on my ceramics. And I've been really fortunate that Higher Fire has been able to keep up a firing schedule and that they were, I was able to rent this wheel from them so I, I can still work on my art at a socially, you know, socially distant from the studio. Um, yeah, it's all been, it's all been good, even amongst all of the negative in the world right now. Uh, being able to do art is, you know, it's good. It's good. Well, thanks and, and, for sharing it with us. Yeah. Thank you so much, Keenan. It was it was a pleasure to see a different side of you artistically. Yeah, it was a pleasure to share it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Keenan. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you, Keenan. Thank you so much. I'm gonna just hang out with this pot for a bit. <laughs> uh, got an angry cat on my by my feet who wants some attention, so I might have to, might have to handle that. <laughs> But I'm so glad y'all stopped by. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. Thanks, thanks to City Lights. Big shout out to Higher Fire, Foothill College. Uh, if you have any artists in your family, community college rules. There's tons of amazing resources. Art is everywhere. Do as much of it as you can. And uh, thanks for, thanks for this. <laughs>